So don't get hung up on Black Friday. Don't feel you have to participate if you if you don't have the margins. Not everyone does. But this store we're working on right now, they didn't want to participate. And I'll show you what we did with that as well. But you know, the key thing is, yes, you've got Black Friday and gonna, there's going to be a ton of people that want the best offers. Then you've got Cyber Monday and the week in between. But do think about the, the remaining weeks up until your cutoff date for the kind of last delivery and how you can drive those last minute sales as well. Depeche joined us a little late, and so he will give us also a little intro. Again, I think probably most people on this uh, on this webinar know who Depeche is. Uh, he is, again, one of the people who is providing the most value of anyone out there in his group, which I saw just reach 6,000 people, which is awesome. And that is a carefully curated 6,000, I will say, because he is very meticulous about um, the way he manages his group. Uh, and so if you have a chance to join it, you know, he, he will definitely be one of the best people out there at, uh, at providing value. Uh, Depeche, where are you now? Are you in the UK or are you in uh, Alberta? I'm in London in the UK. Cold, cold London. Yeah. It's, oh, it's actually pretty sunny here in Victoria, but welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I'll turn the forum over to you uh, right away. Cool. Can I get the uh, screen share? Yep. Just doing that now. Cool. Hey guys, how are you doing? Um, that's, that, my mind's fried with all the kind of info from Max and Ernest. It's epic. And you know, like um, like you guys, I'm learning as well. This is so cool. Um, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys as well. As soon as I get controls, I'll share a small deck that I put together. Actually, you've had an hour full of like so much information. And I'm hoping I can just complement that a little bit as well. Um, so I'm going to go through some of my kind of insights in terms of Facebook ads and e-com in particular and kind of go through some kind of key things that I'm focusing on right now. And I really want you guys to kind of get some insight on as well. Um, can you guys see my screen? I can't see the comments uh, at the moment. Hopefully you can. Um, so really right now, right, the, the key thing right now. So I, I run a Facebook ads agency. I do some in kind of info programs. But really, Q4 for me is is an exciting time. I know you, some of you guys get stressed out. Some of you guys are genuinely excited. I've been doing this for well over a decade. So for me, I'm just kind of rinse, repeating, adapting every year. Just there's always something going on. Ten years ago, I was doing this with paid search, and now I'm focusing just on Facebook ads. And and really, the kind of mechanisms and kind of how you approach Q4. It, it doesn't change. There's common things that happen. So if you talk about Facebook ads and CPM going up, so the cost per thousand impressions, it was the same with paid search 10 years ago. People were saying, you know, the clicks are too expensive. How do you make it work, et cetera, et cetera. But really, it's just part and parcel of the game we play. E-commerce is competitive at any time of the year. Q4 even more so. It's all a gifting season. It's silly holiday sales season. But one of the key things I want to kind of focus on right now is funnels and funnels from an ad account perspective. Because for me, this is the bread and butter of a successful Facebook ads campaign for e-com, probably for any, any kind of niche, but really for e-com, which is what I'm focusing on right now. And it's how you build your audiences up and then take them through a journey. It doesn't matter if you're selling a $20 product, a $200 product, or even $2,000 product. It all comes down to funnels. So this is a funnel I've been working on for, for uh, the last kind of few months, getting it ready for Q4. And in the last 30 days alone, we've spent 180K um, dollars, and then this is Swedish Corona, for a 15X ROAS on $200 average order value. I don't know if any, anyone out there would love to have these metrics, but this is the kind of thing that you can get when you have a strong funnel in place. Now, a funnel isn't just getting your campaigns and your ad sets and ads in a nice order and um, kind of connecting all the technicalities. It also comes down to the creative journey and what kind of messaging you're actually giving out to your customers and how you build up that interest. These kind of numbers don't come about through creating an ad and putting, you know, this, this is a great product you need to buy now, get them to the site and try and close a sale. This is relationship building. And, and that's really what I want you to focus on is you've got, I don't know, a, a week and a bit left for Black Friday. Black Friday isn't the be all and end all of Q4. You've got Black Friday weekend. You've got your kind of Christmas last delivery date coming up. Um, certainly from my experience, you have a lot more 
females buying earlier. So this is something I see year on year, by about September, October time, and into February, uh, in, in, into early November, women are more likely to buy than men, but then the men become the kind of really late shoppers. I know I do that myself. I don't know if I'm stereotyping, I probably am. But from my perspective, I shop last minute. So I, I even often miss Black Friday deals because I'm like, December's here, I need to buy some gifts. So don't get hung up on Black Friday. Don't feel you have to participate if you if you don't have the margins. Not everyone does. But this stall we're working on right now, they didn't want to participate. And I'll show you what we did with that as well. But you know, the key thing is, yes, you've got Black Friday and they're gonna, there's going to be a ton of people that want the best offers. Then you've got Cyber Monday and the week in between. But do think about the, the remaining weeks up until your cutoff date for the kind of last delivery and how you can drive those last minute sales as well. So let me take you through this funnel. So the way I kind of set my campaigns up is I have different layers and I want to kind of layer through different types of people into the next funnel. So I have a cold layer of targeting, which is people, which is essentially prospecting. So this is people that don't know about my brand, my product, and I'm doing prospecting at this stage. I'm trying to attract them into my funnel. And what I love to do at this stage is actually play around with video as well as um, carousel and other, other formats. The great thing about running video at the top of the funnel is twofold. Number one, if your video is great, your copy is great, people may buy off the bat. And, and you can see here, we've got a RAS of four um, on, on a sizable spend and it, and it gives us sales. But the great thing about that is it also gives you a video view retargeting audience as well. Um, so you can target people that are viewed a percentage of your video, 25, 50, 75, and 95% of your video, and you can remarket to them as well. So we can grab people that have been shown an interest in clicking the video into our website retargeting and people that have viewed the video as well. And that's a great way of really bulking up your interest ahead of key dates like Black Friday. Now, the type of ads that I like to work at this level are collection, or now as they're called instant experiences, because you can combine a, a, a really cool, what I like to do is a, a, like a really kind of in-depth product brand video. So something which isn't just your static image of um, your product and maybe just 360 panning, but something that just fits it into the lifestyle. It's something that Dollar Shave have done so, uh, well, Adidas have done, uh, done quite well as well. It's actually showing how people are gonna experience your product because people don't buy a shaver or a hoodie. They're buying an experience. They want it to be part of the Dollar Shave Club. That's why it's called the Dollar Shave Club. If they wanted a razor, they could go and go into their local supermarket and pick up a razor. It's the same with Adidas hoodies as well. They're, they're selling an experience. And, and that's something that works so well with these kind of ads is you can sell that experience in the video and then use your um, you, use the products below to actually sell the individual products in, in the kind of carousel view below that as well. So you can bring items from your catalog directly into your ad. So that's just an example at the top of the funnel. And then what I have is the next level down, which I call warm, is retargeting people that have engaged with the top part of my funnel. So that's people that have viewed a video, people that have engaged with my page, my Instagram page, my Facebook page, um, people that have um, engaged with posts. And I'm, I'm bringing all of these people together because they haven't clicked. They've shown an interest, but they haven't clicked. And you can see here, um, we, we've spent um, 200,000 kroner, which I think is about, I don't know, $20,000 or something like that. Um, and we've generated a, a, almost a 12 ROAS here. So we've stepped up from our cold audience targeting. We generated a four ROAS, which is good in its own right. We can see that we're starting to increase our ROAS the further down we're going through our funnel because they've been invested in our product and in our brand. The kind of ads that work well here are now carousel. So when I've taken them through the journey, they've seen some of our videos, whether it's the instant experience or just static videos, they're now stepping through and now we're showing them carousels to give them more of a range of our products, which are generally kind of multi-category. If you've got a single product, it could be different views of the existing product. And then we take them down into our website retargeting. So this is what I call hot. And, and this is literally anyone that's visited the site, but not purchased. So they might have viewed a, a product page, might have added to cart, might have viewed the checkout, but they've not converted. And here you can see we've got a sizable sum. And actually we've got a return on ad spend of 52. That's absolutely insane for any kind of, um, for, for any kind of, kind of a campaign, let alone e-commerce. But we're only able to do this because we're really funneling people at the top of the funnel. And that gives us our blended 
ROAS numbers by being able to trickle people through. And literally at this stage, it's your typical dynamic product ads. And there's not really much we do beyond that. It's making sure once they've been through this funnel, whether they've clicked or whether they've engaged and then clicked, that we're just being present. And we let Facebook do its clever thing by pulling out the products that people have viewed and present that to people in their newsfeed. And, and that's the kind of way to trickle that down into that kind of um, the funneling system. And this is the kind of high level view. So if you want to screenshot this, you can take it away. You can ask us um, questions, I guess, after uh, we, I finish this piece, or you can come back later as well. But what I'm generally doing is breaking up my funnel into four parts. Cold is prospecting. Warm is people that have engaged but not clicked. Hot is those that have clicked but not bought. And then there's this bottom layer of people that have actually purchased. Because, you know, as, as Max alluded to, there's money to be made post-purchase. And I see so many people leaving money on the table at that point, thinking that Facebook ads is all about acquisition. It's not. It's all about um, acquisition and reacquisition. So this is where your existing customer targeting comes from. And, and this is just a kind of example. This is not exactly what you need to do. But for example, zero to 30 days after they've purchased, think about a thank you message, as, as Max alluded to. Think about cross sales. We had a great example where uh, on, on a baby store, we, we had a top seller, which was a baby blanket. And we knew that if someone didn't buy the blanket, they hadn't seen it. But if they'd seen it, they would buy it. So if anyone purchased a product and it wasn't a baby blanket, we fired up a dynamic product ad of blankets and served them those ads. Or I think it was like seven days after they first purchased. So we gave them time to receive the first, first order. And, and the sales of that was through the roof because we knew it was our bestseller. We knew it would complement the product they've got. So it just gives you another example. And, and the great thing about that is you're, you're reacquiring an existing customer. So your CPAs are that much smaller and your profit is that much higher because essentially you've acquired that customer once and you're reselling to them and you can continue reselling to them. Another great example was a candle company where we, we realized that most people would buy again within 30 to 40 days. We ran retargeting to existing customers between 30 and 180 days of their last purchase. And, and again, we, we drew in, drew, drew kind of insane revenue numbers because we were selling them the kind of new bestsellers, the new um, category items that had come in because we knew when, when the buying cycle was going to kick in again. So there's different ways you can look at existing customers and lifetime value. And, and this is all about countering this concern that Facebook ads is becoming more expensive. It sure is if you're um, average order value is $20, $25, $30. It's becoming even more difficult. But if you're able to increase your average order value or you're able to really work on your lifetime value, which is what comes up, up, up after they've made their first purchase, then you can ride all the stor storms that kind of hit Facebook ads and continue in profit. And, and this is what I really try and uh, preach and focus on is don't just look at that first acquisition point. Focus on what's actually happening after that as well. So that's that's kind of just a focus on funnels. And I'm, I'm just going to go through five quick Black Friday, um, Cyber Monday hacks for you to also consider as well and things that have worked for me in the past that I'm also focusing on right now. Number one is I ran a test recently where, as you can see on the left-hand side, I did a broad audience, US 18 plus. Um, this was actually female. And what I did with this test is to test different optimized pixel events on a website conversion campaign. So for anyone that has run Facebook ads for e-commerce, you're most likely starting off with a website conversion campaign. And what I wanted to actually do was to see how expensive it was to run my ads to these different events. Because essentially what you're telling Facebook is, I want someone who's likely to purchase. And that's why you'd select the purchase event. And you might say, all right, I want people that are likely to add to cart or likely to click on my ad. And so what I did is actually add those events in. And as you can see, top to bottom, it's literally the pixel at the top of your funnel. So VC is view content and landing page views are the cheapest traffic you can go for. And right at the bottom of that list is event purchase is the most expensive type of traffic you can go for. And in this example, I ran it, um, I think it was end of October, maybe start of November. And these were the CPMs I was getting from a broad audience. This was in the shoe category. So it's one of my dropship um, stores on shoes. And you can see the stark difference in CPM, the cost I'm paying per thousand impressions. So for the purchase event, I'm paying 28 pounds. For view content, I'm paying 13 pounds. That's less than half. And my click-through rate is even higher. Now, 
you know, you might look at this and, and think, great, I'm not going to optimize for my purchase event, it's too expensive. You also have to look at intent as well. And the balancing act right now in Q4 is how can I get the best value traffic? It's not about the cheapest traffic. It's not even about the most expensive. It's the best value. So I would be testing with the different purchase events in the lead up to Black Friday and even on Black Friday, because I guarantee you a lot of advertisers will be going after that purchase event because they want people that are ready to buy and they're going to pay top dollar for it as well. Does it mean that it's going to be the best traffic? Possibly, maybe not, but you can actually test different pixel events, PI being payment info, IC being initiate checkout, and see if you can actually balance the cost that you're paying for, for the audience with the actual return you're getting back in performance as well. The, the second hack is something we're doing actively right now with um, all, all the accounts that we're running is actually doing sp Facebook split tests. So if you haven't used the split test in Facebook, I recommend you go and look it up and find out how it works. It's such a cool tool to take a single audience and to split that single audience into tests. Now, if you have, let's say, a, a, an audience, female, 18 plus in the US, and you want to run a test, you might think, I'm going to run three ads in a single ad set and just see which one works best. The problem is that A, Facebook decides which of those ads to send the traffic to, and B, there's no guarantee that someone's just going to see the one ad. So they could end up seeing all three ads, and by virtue of seeing all three ads, one of them worked really well, so you'll never know that. With the Facebook split test tool, you can split an audience. In this case, I split it three ways, and I've actually put three ads in there because I wanted to test, and my hypothesis was that um, running a 10% offer is going to be better than running a jackets offer, so a specific category. And I, run, I also ran a no offer as a control. So what I did is to take a single audience, and these were past purchasers, I split that audience in three and let Facebook take my budget and split that into three and then run it for a week and see what kind of results I came back with. And actually, the results were quite stark. So for, for the bottom row there where we had no offer running, we actually generated no sales. And, and that was really positive to see because the two offers that we ran were the ones that generated sales. And if you look at the jackets at the top, um, we've got a row ass of 23. And a cost per ad to cart, which is one of the things we were looking for, of 13, whereas the 10% off site-wide offer in this particular test performed the best. And so that gives me insight as to which offer I'm going to run on Black Friday. We've still got some more testing to do. So we're now taking these variations and doing more split tests um, this week and early next week so that when we actually hit Black Friday, we're not guessing. We're not thinking, right, which offer should we run? Let's run all of them. Because if you run too many offers, people just get confused and they'll be, they, they won't actually click into the offers at all. If you can be a lot more focused, like for example, if this was my result right now, I would I would go all out on the 10% off site-wide offer, but I'd have the jackets up ready as my plan B if that didn't work. So this is another kind of quick hack. It doesn't cost a lot. You can do it really quickly. It's really simple to set up. There's no reason to test your offers out before Black Friday. This is another hack to do with page speed load. So this is um, a site we're working on a few months ago. And actually, one of the metrics that I focus on is looking at your outbound clicks in your ads manager report and your landing page views. The difference between that is if someone's created an outbound click from Facebook and they've not generated a landing page view on your site, it's either um, a bot that sent traffic, spammy traffic, or maybe someone's blocking your pixel from loading with a pixel blocker or something, a, a third-party cookie blocker. And one thing we noticed on this account is if you read from top to bottom on the LPV column here, landing page view, we were not getting enough people clicking from Facebook and actually generated a page view. When we analyzed it and we went through page load time performance, there, there was a lot of issues with the page load time. We actually got that fixed. And just by doing that, we literally doubled return on ad spend. That's literally not changing Facebook ads, not changing anything else in our sales funnel, but just speeding up the site. And the reason why I want you to focus on this is because when it comes to Black Friday, when it comes to high, high competition time in the auction, Facebook is looking at so many things. So if you're bidding high and you've got lots of competitors and you're all in the auction, and Facebook has to decide, right, which ad is going to get this impression for this premium customer. They're going to look at other factors. And one of the biggest factors is page load time. So you've still got time to fix up your page load time. There's GT metrics. There's Pingdom are the two tools that I use to just figure out where the problem is and get that page load time improved so that 
you know, not only is it great for Facebook, it's great for your users as well, and it'll make a big difference to your results. Then the other part I want to focus on is FOMO, fear of missing out. This is something you really have to play on when it comes to really time sensitive offers. So Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the whole weekend, um, last delivery date for Christmas. The FOMO will be different for your brand and for your product, but think about what it could be. What's the thing that they will miss out if they don't buy this product right now on this particular visit to the site? Especially on Black Friday, once you've got them to your site, you don't want them to leave because they're going to get hounded by other offers. And so how do you keep them on the site? You, you need social proof. You need um, some, you know, some kind of um, ethical um, kind of fear of missing out. Maybe it's limited stock. Maybe there's only 100 left. Maybe you've got a countdown timer. Be careful with countdown timers because Facebook don't generally um, promote this. But there are different ways you can try and keep people interested and just kind of think about um, you know, the, what, what about your product is, is the reason they need to buy today and they need it, this is the Christmas gift. Is there a bundle offer? Is there something that you're giving them today um, with this purchase? Maybe it's free delivery. Keep them on the site as much as you can because once they leave, it's going to be really hard to bring them back. Sure, you can run retargeting campaigns, but once they're on the site on, on a day like Black Friday or Cyber Monday, you absolutely need to try and bring uh, keep them in as well. The final tip that I want to share with you is if you are generating lists, and Max covered this off as well, and it's something which if you're on Facebook, you should absolutely be um, developing your, your lists ahead of kind of campaigns like Black Friday. This is something we did last year, and actually the spike you can see is um, for this particular e-com store, our spike didn't come on Black Friday. It actually came on the Thursday before because we did email collection in the uh, months leading up to Black Friday. So it's just join up on a newsletter, get 10% off all the latest deals, latest collections, et cetera. But we went early with our offer on the Thursday. So Thursday evening, especially because this was an apparel store, you can really play on the fear of missing the right uh, product because the product could sell out and missing out on the right size. You know, fragmentation is one of the biggest challenges when it comes to apparel. And if you can play on that fear and really build up your list ahead of time, then you can actually release that early and, and call it a, like a VIP offer. So existing customers, anyone that's on your email list that hasn't purchased, go heavy on that. Promote it with Facebook ads. You can uh, push ads to those that you've emailed and get them back in as well and, and tell them you can get the, the, the best stock, the best availability before everyone comes on the, on the Friday. And we did this with this particular client and, and they ended up having a record break in uh, sales on the Thursday despite having a great Friday as well. So they're just kind of some kind of quick tips for you to consider that we're actually focusing on for Black Friday. Um, and I hope that that gives you something to think about with your funnels, with the way you position your um, ads, your creative, building up the interest in your product and your brand, and actually thinking about different ways to really execute your sales when it does come to come to kind of Black Friday, Black Friday weekend, Cyber Monday, and also your kind of last delivery date. And, and also for a lot of people, um, one thing I would also just add to that is the period between Christmas and New Year is often a period where there isn't as much competition in the auction. This happens on TV as well. Um, so actually, if you do have anything which could could work, kind of pre-New Year, that's also a premium point to be thinking about closing out your quarter as well. So um, for a lot of people, they'll just focus on their delivery date for Christmas. People will continue to buy. You know, if you just say, you know, it's too late to deliver for Christmas or post Christmas say hey, here's a special offer end of end of year sale and, and just try and, try and squeeze in those end of um, end of quarter sales to just give yourself a great chance to finish 2018 on a high and get yourself ready for 2019. So hopefully that's been useful. Um, I'm going hand to hand it back to Eric and I guess we'll go through any questions that you guys have as well. Um, I guess Max and uh, Ernest are going to rejoin us too. Fantastic. I've learned so much on this webinar. Uh, I have the thing that I've learned that strikes me most right now is that British people say apparel instead of apparel. I had no idea. <laughs> uh, did you know? Did you know that, Ernest? Um, no, I had I didn't pay attention <laughs> in terms of like the, the verbiage, but uh, apparently you did, Eric. Cause just yeah, I'm, a, I'm all about you can pass this on the on syllables. But guys, okay, so this is just the quick, you know, I, you know, you've been on webinars before. Uh, there's usually an offer at the end of them. 
Uh, today is no different, but I'm going to make it really quick. I am famous for sometimes value stacking for upwards of 45 minutes. I'm not going to value stack for 45 minutes today. You guys all know December 7th, e-commerce mastery live in uh, in Asia, Bangkok, Thailand is going to be our best show yet. Uh, we had over 400 people in Barcelona and we will be uh, duplicating that in Bangkok and I can't wait. These guys are going to be there. Uh, and several other speakers that I'll just highlight a little bit right now. We got Maxwell Finn talking about user acquisition. We got Ernest Epps giving his amazing brand of, of, of e-commerce training. We got Tim Bird giving his most recent bidding techniques and other sort of uh, intuitions around the algorithm. Uh, we've got all the top influencers there. Easily talks from these guys could be valued at $500 just alone. Then of course we've got Van Oaks. You've maybe seen the podcast with him recently. Um, his is all about how he runs about 50K a day at far, five times ROAS uh, using a perfected giveaway model. We've got Depeche uh, going deep on how to break through the noise with his Facebook ads. We've got Jordan Rolbeck, who's the president and co-founder of DFO, Direct Focus Online, which is one of the biggest international e-commerce brands in the world. Um, and again, these people all together, $500, $500 value. We've got Sebastian Gomez who is a drop shipping legend, who's giving uh, his talk on specifically how to build a brand if you're a drop shipper and how to act on it quickly. We've got Alex Brand who built the Beard Club on how to build incredible brand loyalty, how to build your tribe. Uh, and we've got Eric Tosco who's built an empire on print on demand jewelry, talking specifically about how to raise your LTV. All of these guys have been hand selected to provide the utmost value in Bangkok. Uh, and so you're going to get these nine talks from these people. You're going to get the chance to lunch, to, to network with each of these people during the breaks, during the lunch, during the meet the speakers happy hour. You're going to get snacks and lunch and happy hour. That's not a big deal. But easily, this kind of experience, this kind of training could be valued at $1,500. Uh, but you're also going to get the opportunity to take the plunge. Now, now you're also very lucky you get the opportunity to see me in a bathing suit. Uh, which doesn't happen often, but this was when I went to Bangkok to form iStack Training. I flew out there, uh, met met the guy who who was kind of working on it and that, that was handing it off to me. Uh, flew out there on more or less a whim, and it's become an amazing decision for me. Bangkok, going to Bangkok has always been an amazing decision for me uh, in a number of ways across my life. So uh, you'll be taking the plunge if you come and join us there, which is an absolutely priceless priceless thing. Uh, and today you're not going to pay fifteen hundred dollars or even the, the sticker price of 625. Today, if you buy during the webinar in the next couple hours, uh, this promo code is good, which you can use ECML save 100, you can save $100, get the ticket for very close to our early bird price, which is $525. Uh, if you go to iStack.link slash BKK, iStack.link slash BKK, uh, check it out. We have about just about 50 seats remaining uh, and we're doing dozens every day. It's, it's funny, we've been building out these campaigns for, for months. And the CPAs have been good. Uh, the CPAs have been, uh, you know, really, really good. Uh, but over the last couple of days, with all the chickens coming home to roost and everyone buying their last-minute tickets, our CPAs are, are sub ten dollars over the past week, uh, which is crazy for a five hundred dollar product. So it's been it's been fun running ads for this kind of stuff. Um, here's the other part I teased at the end. So stick around. We got a few people dropping off now. When I make the offer, it happens. But what I'd like is for you to stick around because we're going to do some questions with the experts a little bit after. But but for now, we know that not everyone can make it to Bangkok. We know that not everyone can just pick up and fly halfway around the world. You should consider it. But if you can't, we just today also made a pre-buying opportunity where you can actually buy the recordings for ECML Asia. But you won't get them, of course, until after the event, until about a couple weeks after the event. But if you buy them now, you can get them for the lowest price possible for only $249. So you'll get a full eight-hour day of training um, built in. You'll get the access to the recordings for your lifetime. Uh, you'll have all this timeless knowledge, this incredibly timely knowledge, uh, and you'll be able to stave off that terrible feeling of FOMO that you missed out on the event. And if you buy now, you can save $200 uh, on that. So you can now find that option on iStack.link slash BKK. You can see we've got three options for the for buying the tickets. Uh, you can you can enter a promo code on the on the tickets to save $100 to get it down to $525 for ECML. Uh, the Mastermind Dinner, which we're doing, where we're gonna have all the speakers out at a fit, we're renting out a fantastic Bangkok restaurant. We're gonna be doing some private presentations. We're gonna be doing just high level networking with people from Shopify, uh, people from DFO, people from all, all of our sponsors as well as all of our speakers. It's an amazing opportunity to build your network at the highest level uh, and make some lifetime friends in a wild city like Bangkok. 
Uh, and then for only 249 right now, you can get the ECML replays as like a super early bird. And this will be your best chance to get those uh, recordings, own that knowledge for as cheaply as possible. And then we have one other big announcement you've maybe seen in our social media. We've been teasing this out since we started um, ISAC training, since I started ISAC training, our, our events have just been the highest value thing we do. The, we, we bring the best people. We put on the best show. I feel like I'm the host with the most. Uh, we create an amazing atmosphere where you can meet people, you can network, you can learn all these amazing things. And for the first time ever, iStack as a company, even with Affiliate World Asia, because we're actually the same company, iStack Holdings, we've never been to the US. We've never done a show in the US. It's always been in Asia or in Europe, essentially in Berlin or Barcelona. I think there was one in the UK. We've never done anything in the United States. And I'm super excited to announce that next year in 2019, we are going to be going to the United States. You can check out iStack link, iStack.link slash Vegas right now for the early bird sales for a two day event that we're gonna be putting on in Las Vegas, January 9th and 10th, Facebook and e-commerce mastery live, combining the two events that we put on over the past couple of years, our Facebook mastery live and our e-commerce mastery live into a two day event uh, where we're gonna bring in 12 or 16 different uh, experts. It's going to be massive growth for your Facebook ads, your e-commerce based business. Uh, and if you, again, this is super early bird uh, with the rest of the year. So if you buy now, you can save over $500 on this ticket prices. These prices won't last long and because these are our first ever US events. We're sort of limiting the amount of seats that we're selling uh, we're, we're, in terms of the venue that we're having it in. So we really urge you if you're, if you're going to be in Las Vegas, if you're going to be there for affiliate summit, if you're gonna if you live in Las Vegas, if you're from the States, I highly recommend you come check out this event. It's going to be an amazing one. It's a two-day event that we're actually doing in partnership with AdLeaks, Tim Bird's AdLeaks. Um, so Tim Bird, of course, will be a speaker there uh, and he's helping us put on the, the whole event. So it's a really great opportunity to join us in Las Vegas. If you go to iStack.link slash Vegas. So to recap, come to Bangkok. If you're on the fence at all, don't be. Come to Bangkok for this amazing live training opportunity. Uh, if you can't come, grab the replay and get it now because, you know, the last replay we did, the last event we did, we sold over 500 replays and most people didn't find out about it until after the early bird price and you're just paying the full amount there when you really could be paying $200 less. You could be using that $200 to buy ads uh, and then using the the, the replays that, that, you, that you watch in order to really grow your skills. So buy it now if you, if you possibly can because it'll save you a lot of money. Uh, and then I should mention, if you do come, you don't have to buy the replays. Those all come um, included. So if you can't come, if you just can't make it out to Bangkok, make sure you buy the replays on the early bird. Uh, and then if you've just been waiting for us, like why aren't you guys ever in the United States? Well, now you can go to iStack.link slash Vegas and you can join us in Las Vegas for our first ever two day event in 2019. Uh, that's pretty much it for me. I think that was, that was the shortest sell I've ever done, but I wanted to turn it over to our legends. Uh, experts, let, we'll call them legends for, for the QA, just for their egos. Um, but we have a few questions here that are uh, still here. I will um, take a look. Can you guys see the question?